Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're doing all right in lockdown. As you can see, made the area look a little bit nicer. Sorry, still on the same quality. The rest of the video will be in higher, higher resolution, so don't worry about that this time. So, this week, you know, I feel it's been a while since we've all seen some new music. So I was going through my old recordings and I found this, you know, great performance and interview with Mighty Mo Rogers and his band. So I've got uh, two classic Mighty Mo albums here. That's uh, Cadillac Jack, one of the classic ones. In part of the interview, we're talking about Griot Blues, which is this album here. That's with uh, Baba Sissoko and Mighty Mo and the band. So if you want to know what I've been up to, I've got my recent vlog, which you can see the link up there in the description. At the end of the video, I'll have things to do in quarantine linked again. I also wanted to remind you guys about Artflix. So Artflix is a streaming platform that will eventually be on uh, virtual reality as well, that um, me and some colleagues have created. Uh, we're currently in, in investment process, so if you're interested in more information, go on our website or you can buy uh, shares in Artflix or tickets for the Artflix app here and here. <laughs> Your support means a lot. So please can we head over to the Artflix Facebook page and you know flood that with likes. Um, so this is more of like a conversation interview and it starts with us uh, talking about challenges they've faced. Um, don't worry there'll be a little bit of information on the screen to explain that. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks a lot. Over and out. You ready? Already ready. Yeah. I'm not talking to him. Talk to me. You ready? Already. He's already. Oh, she's ready too. <laughs> well, this song is dedicated to anybody and everybody who lives on a third planet from the sun. Yeah. Stop. We're just prisoners, prisoners in 
originally just mm -hmm. they said your stuff is just too different yeah. so that I had to do it myself and to, to, to the blues muse yeah. which I believe it blew up mm -hmm. you know Universal signed me the biggest label at 57 years old that don't happen mm -hmm. the guy even says I've never heard nobody sign on the biggest the Universal biggest record at 57 years old yeah represent for that Mm -hmm. Represent for that. That's a, that's an achievement, I think, definitely. It was a miracle. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it. I, I did it because I, I wanted to do the music. My son never heard me play. I was I, I was a teacher. Yeah. I quit. What did What did you teach? Science and math. Oh yeah, nice, sir. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's why you believe in evolution. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, only in the, only in the songs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah. So you know, anyway, everybody has challenges. I know the, all the guys here got yeah, some challenges. Course, yeah. you had challenges. Oh man, yeah. Well, yeah. I had challenge. Just you went, you went to Chicago. Yeah. All the way to Chicago because mm -hmm. he loved the blues. That's a cool story. Yeah. That's a great story. It took a while, but then I, but I decided to do it. And moved. then there was a challenge That's to leave a challenge. my job. Mm -hmm. And just, to leave his just dream. To, just to, you know, mature the idea inside of you. and. So you were, you, you were based in Italy then? Oh ah, yeah, I was a computer teacher. And and so you you were in Italy. You were you just you wanted to play guitar. I was playing already with. My but you hand. wanted to, to like professionally <coughs> play guitar. Oh, I got to a point. I mm -hmm. had to choose. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I decided to you know mm -hmm. quit my job and we 
a little money, I had a bar yeah. to use it to go to United States, Chicago. Yeah, nice. Stayed three years there. So. Mm -hmm. That, that was a challenge. Mm. That had been a challenge, but it, I, you know, <laughs> it, it worked. I don't regret at no all. Regrets. No, no regrets. No regrets at all. I would have regret if I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're so. right. Oh yeah, you right. Can That's you right. imagine now? The would have could have sure. Working as a computer teacher. Oh man. Now, yeah. That's like the song. <laughs> no regrets. Working as a computer teacher yeah, computer in a machine. cubicle, right? Mm -hmm. Computer machine. You tore the machine. <laughs> I tore the machine. I took my guitar and went, went to Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> so you gotta put that That's in your nice. CD. Yeah, put, yeah. You gotta put that yeah, in your CD. Yeah, yeah, I wrote that song. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? That's incredible. Oh, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Because you love music that much. That's just. You gotta really believe it. You mm -hmm. do. You, know? you do. You do. Well, that's a good segue into the next question, which is kind of two part question. Firstly, how, how did you meet, and what's the what's your plans for the future? A two two pronged question. This is these are both for you. Yeah, well, we met in, well, we, we met in Lithuania. You know, the, the city of the country of Lithuania. Mm -hmm. It was a small country. Through um, playing up there, this guy named Jay. He's kind of a little kind of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, he said he told the guy in Mexico, I know these guys, these Italian guys, they're good, you know, and, and, and they can back more up. That's how I met uh, the guys out um, through this guy. We, he, we had some gigs. Mm -hmm. We rehearsed a little bit. They heard my music, you know, and then um, it progressed from that. It's funny, it's like, um, that was fate too, mm -hmm. because this guy in Chicago, you know, in LA where I'm at, had not got in contact with Jay. Mm -hmm. He was fishing for different outlets for me, a friend of mine. If he hadn't contacted um, Jay, I never would have met met, met these musicians. Mm -hmm. It never would have happened. So that was faded too. Yeah. You know, some and I things. knew this guy from Chicago because he was living in Chicago. Jay, yeah. Jay right, yeah. he knew he knew Jay from Chicago. Yeah. Because Jay is he's Lithuanian but mm -hmm. he lives in Chicago. Yeah. Chicago is a large Lithuanian community. Oh yeah. Yeah, cause, you know, very large. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how he knew Jay before I did. Yeah. You know, and then Jay told him about man, this guy from Chicago. He saw me, Googled me, saw my stuff mighty most. Oh, man, we should get him here and you all could back him up. That's how it started. So mm -hmm. from there, it just snowballed. Yeah, nice. So, um, been a few years. What? Th I mean, three years. Three? Almost maybe three, more. Two, four? at least three years. Yeah, maybe four. Cause we cut, we cut this record a year ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago. What's the name of the record? Griot gr 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 Blues. Exactly. Good record too, and we're gonna play here, um, in in May. <coughs> yeah, and I'll uh, link to it. I'll link to it on, okay. the, on the screen as well. Um, what what's your creative process of writing? My creative process. Mm -hmm. Very strange. <laughs> Very strange. But so it changes from song to song, or yeah. it's uh, or it's. I believe in uh, for me. I don't know. I, to me, music is alive. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel it. It's like a it has a muse, a blues muse. Mm -hmm. I hear. I listen. I learn that you don't you don't write a song. It writes you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to listen, and you just uh, what's the word? A facilitator. You know, I listen really. Sometimes I cry. I get these. I, I got. There's so many things. I mean, I have at, at my at my place. I got legal pads this big, stacked up this high. At least hundreds yeah. with ideas. On my iPad, I, I'll die for. On my iPad, I got a hundred ideas. Yeah. Just an iPad, you know. Because if I hear something, it it, it it's like uh, putting a thread out of a cloth. Yeah. So you know, sometimes I I hear a, a title. Yeah. So wow, that's a great title. That's how I got Moving Day. I never told you the whole story. I used to work for a record label in Hollywood, and I was a I was a guy who listened to tapes. They were sending people sending songs. Mm -hmm. They were sending tapes, and I was the tape guy. If it was really good, I put it over. If it was bad, just write him a letter and say no good. Mm -hmm. And this guy sent this song in called Moving Day. It was, it sucked. It was really bad. And it was just it was just a little pop thing. Says. I got to move today. I got to get all my furniture out. I got to get out of my house. I got to move to another place. It's a moving day for me. It was just a simple song. And I was so angry. I took the tape and I threw it over the wall. 
I said, what a dumb song. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was sitting at the piano and I said, this should be a love song. I said, moving day, moving day, time to move my heart away. And for me, all it takes is one hook and yeah. all the song comes down. Mm -hmm. Everything and I have to write fast to copy it because it just comes quick. Yeah, <laughs> it's really for me. That's what happens. I mean, I just, mm -hmm. you know. So sometimes the inspiration is just a. I'll, I'll be in, a, in, a, in somewhere and I hear something. Boom, pa, pa, pa. I said, that's nice. And I even take myself and I hold it up there. Mm -hmm. You know, I said I like it. I said, but it's not good. I said only three notes is good in it. And I said I like those three notes, but everything else sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, and I say, oh, that's great. You know, and I reconstruct that show. I hear this, all stuff like that. And sometimes I read poetry all the time. Yeah. I read poetry in Langston Hughes. I love William Blake. Mm -hmm. I took graduate classes in William Blake. I love yeah. William Blake. Mm -hmm. You know, Shakespeare. And I read all the great poets. Mm -hmm. All of them, you know. And I take the ideas for them. Oh, that's a great line, this poetic line. But it needs to be twisted, mm -hmm. you know. Because as William Faulkner says, everybody, if you're going to steal, steal from geniuses. Mm -hmm. That's from William Faulkner, Nobel Prize, and uh, Igor Stravinsky said it too. I used to be feel guilty because I hear an idea and it's a poorly constructed idea. But when I was in Motown, because I could write music, and these guys would hear a bass line on this silk, and they said, Mo, that's great. Can you copy that bass line down? I said, sure. You know, and I copied down. The song sucked, but the bass line was strong. Yeah. Motown got out of everywhere. You know, so to me, ideas, if you, they're everywhere. Yeah. I take a newspaper every day I read, the New York Times, mm -hmm. LA Times. And at least every day, I get five ideas out of a newspaper. Oh, yeah? Every day. I, I, oh, and I tear up off here and I put it here. You know. So you mean like a story that interests you? No, or? it could just be the, the, the name of the story at the top. something that, that comes out to you. Right. To you know, like one of us said, uh, I, I saw I read a book. When it, the book was called The Tattooed Heart. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the book. The book sucked. But the title was great, yeah, Tattooed Heart. Yeah. And I wrote a whole love song. There's a tattoo on my heart. Yeah. It's tearing me apart. Tattoo of you. Mm -hmm. You know. Tattoo, 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 like a heartbeat, you mm -hmm. know. So it's just, if you're a writer, you 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 sponge. Yeah. You sponge and you and you take ideas, especially if you. I learned again from Motown, cause Motown. When, you, when I wrote for Motown, I met Smokey Robinson, mm -hmm. who's a brilliant writer. And I wrote with the guy who, what becomes of the broken oh, nice, hearted? Yeah. And he wrote that song. He makes a hundred fifty thousand dollars every year the rest of his life. Yeah. On that one song, raw just. Yeah. Because he hear it in doctor's office, and mm -hmm. his name was Spoon. He just, he don't even have a high school education. Yeah. But they, in Motown, it's very competitive. And you go there, and it's like a, a poker game. And mm -hmm. he go, he, he come on next to what you got, Mo? And I said, I got this song here. And, and Gordy had a factory. He said, he, he would critique the song. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a cliche. They done that. I played for Gordy personally. Yeah. Audition. He called, asked me because they heard my Kirby playing in. Venice Beach, mm -hmm. the hippie. So, God, you got some great lyrics. Why don't you come, you know, play for Motown? I did, you know, but it's very, very competitive. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, that's why they wrote the hits. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's what I did, and you know, that's how I write. Uh, maybe another add-on from that. You have any like one lyric that you're very proud of that you think when I wrote that, I, so, some, you know? Yeah, I got a good one. Um, I bought a talking dog the other day. The dog got laryngitis, so I gave it away. They took it to the pound and turned it into glue. Now I'm sniffing the dog instead of him sniffing you. That's a good line. Really. <laughs> That's one of my lines. It's got a crazy line. You know, talking, it's called, um, what's it called? Talking, talking dog blues, I don't know. Anyway, talking dog blues. <laughs> Anyone do this song for 
a video or two. This is on an album I jack on the Cadillac Jam. Called yeah. Got Paul <laughs> Yes. 
So, maybe we want to talk about Riot Blues a little bit. Um, so, what was the, the process of making, making that album? A miracle. <laughs> one. Yeah. It was a miracle. It was like magic. Yeah. We did it all what how many days? Three four days. Three, four, three, four. three, four days. Four days, right? It's four days. Yeah. Four days. You know, we just, just laying the tracks down, yeah. talking in the studio, you know. And four days in the studio. Four days yeah. laying you, 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 you hadn't met and the, vocals. Um, the other what's his name, sorry? Uh Baba. Yeah, so you you hadn't met him before. We met him you, before. Uh -huh, on the but, stage. Uh -huh, so you hadn't like uh, worked? No, we never work. worked. He was he, he came. He, he heard us playing, and he said, "Jay, I want to go on the stage." And he came on the stage, and we were playing. And he can't say I met him. He's just an all white, very charismatic mm -hmm. guy. He singing and playing. Really, you 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 would love him. Yeah. No ego. Amazing. No ego. And but yeah, he's like Jimi Hendrix. He's truly gifted. Yeah. He can sing. And he's he can play. And it's with one string instrument. What is that called? Do 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 do. He played that yeah. do, 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 and he walks around and plays this thing and he plays that do, 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 talking drum and do it is bad. Yeah. And he's fun to play and he's and it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's what we met in the studio after we played rather. We said, Jay said, let's do this record. Jay didn't know what the record was gonna sound like. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a clue. He just threw it together and you know, paid for the studio and we yeah. start he came with some ideas, I came with some ideas. Walter had a melody idea, it was really nice. So um, we took all these ideas mm -hmm. and we did it. Nice. And now it's gotten great reviews all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's blowing up. As it's, we already got 15 dates yeah. in France. 15, mm -hmm. maybe gonna be more, minimum 15. Mm -hmm. And here, yeah. and now uh, cause they, uh, uh, Hans heard it once, he says, oh yes, I like it, yeah. you know, boom. So we're here the second week in of May, yeah. and I just talked to Steph, he's trying to put some more May stuff on May, mm -hmm. some May stuff, you know, and in Germany. Cool. So the record is, it's a good, I ain't trying to brag, but it's a good record. Mm -hmm. It's a dang good record, you know, for, you know, how quick we did it, but it's, it, we had, everybody's good players, yeah. and they can change on a, a stop of a dime. Mm -hmm. But I had some ideas, I, I tell Walter, Walter, can you try this, can you change it right now? Got it. Yeah. You know, so when you got good players and guys can change, then you got, you know, a concept. Mm -hmm. And then I took it back to LA through this guy who I mixed and matched, he's really good. Cool. Maurice Gaynor and was able to add stuff. I added a flute player, mm -hmm. you know, and a, um, a harmonica player. Nice. A couple of songs and uh, I think we put a guitar over one song, but mm -hmm. the rest is history as they say. Mm -hmm. Griot Blues is cool. And uh, where can the uh, listeners find that? Is it should they go to you, direct to your website to Mike Demo? Or? No, it's all over. The, it's all over. Is that uh, Spotify? Yeah, on Apple Music. Apple Music, iTunes. Yeah, all the sites. They go to any site and Google uh, Griot Blues. Yeah. Um, Robinson Soka, Mighty Mo Rogers, it'll come up. Cool. You know, I'm pretty sure it's on all of the sites, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, last question. Do you have any advice for? For other musicians, or other people wanting to get into the They're always industry. assessing that question. I know, man. I know. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know, because my little advice, maybe it wouldn't work for nobody else. All I can say is, like I say on the stage, don't do it for money, do it because you love it. Yeah. That's my really first advice. It's, it's important. Yeah. Do it because you love it. And if you do what you love and you love what you do, the money will follow. Exactly. I believe that. And I think you're right. I believe that if you really love what you do and you listen to your muse, mm -hmm. you know, and if you got if you if you've been touched by the muse and you can you got a gift, do it. Because I, I was surrounded by what I call Lilliputians. Mm -hmm. You know, Gulliver's Travels. You know. Uh, yeah, exactly. Lilliputians, uh, yeah. the little people mm -hmm. who tell me, Mo, this ain't gonna work. I mean, I, I can't say when I was playing in L.A. When I got back in the business, you know, I started playing with friends of mine. I said, I'm going to get back in the record business when I separated from Pat. You know, and she went over and I said, I, I was 54, 53 years old. And I started playing around L.A. And I couldn't get musicians. They said, man, he's too old. I'm serious. I got, I turned his drummer. Bad drummer. Mm -hmm. And he's playing with me. And I said, look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I know it's going to be good. And, and he... He played one gig. The next night when I was playing, he didn't even show up, didn't even call me. Imagine you playing at a big place and your drummer don't. That's how much he didn't think it was going to work. Yeah. 
Go forward five years. I signed with Universal. They gave me a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I paid twenty five thousand to do my break. They gave me a hundred thousand dollars for mm -hmm. Will and Wall. That's how much they loved it. And this dude, all these guys now, he left. He was out. They all now. They call me in L.A. all the time. He called and he said, "Can you uh, can you tell me? my guitar player Steve says?" Cause Steve knows, he said, can you tell Mo I'm sorry what I said and if he needs a drummer, let me know. Uh, yeah. I mean, all the time. I had three drum, dr three, uh, two drummers, three guitar players, two bass players, all of them knocking on my door yeah. or see me driving through LA or something. Or they see me playing and say, man, or they hit me up and go, I'm telling Mo I'm, I didn't know. You know? <laughs> and I tell them all, I don't hate you. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. I wish them well. This business is big enough for everybody. Never yeah. hate nobody. Yeah. Wish them well. But you ain't playing with me no more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but you wish them well. Mm -hmm. Because they, you know, I understand if I'm playing with somebody who's 56 years old, I would think it ain't gonna work either. That's an old dog. Mm -hmm. You know, none of these guys he, he in their 57 yet. <laughs> You're all younger. You know, babies. <laughs> well you still you know, you still young, you know. So, you know, it's just a blessing. So we got I got great catching. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna go pretty good. Yeah. You know, we're going to, this um, Griot Blues is going to blow up, because that's part one. We're going to do Griot Blues 2 cool. and part three, you know, ideas. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. I think that's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. Yeah. People going to like it. If you hear the record, I think you'll like it. Mm -hmm. And we'll be here May eight, the 8th to 12th. 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right. So that's five days. So come to Mary's Jazz Room. You're going to hear some great, great Africa meets blues goes to Africa is what they call it, mm -hmm. you know. And this Baba Sissoka guy, he's and his his cousin, say do. Mali to Mississippi. Oh yeah, Mali, Mali to Mississippi. Nice. <laughs> that's the, that's one of the songs. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. That's yeah, nice. Yep, it's gonna be fun. All right, so thanks a lot, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much.